Hi, I'm Professor Jim Hoover, and we're going to talk about algorithm biases today. Have a short discussion on a topic that's neither black nor white, but it's actually fairly nuanced and difficult. Some of the conversations we might have actually might be a little sensitive, but understand we're trying to uncover the issues that are deeply embedded in almost all healthcare IT software. Implicit unintended biases that impact patient safety and health equities. So let's define biases before we begin. A bias is a prejudice in favor of one thing or against another. And we often consider these prejudices or biases to be bad. Biases can be either conscious or unconscious. We're going to focus on, for our purposes, on unconscious biases or implicit biases that find their way into our software systems. A long time ago, cameras only used film, and there were biases in this system of developing photographs, if you can believe it. Once we took the photos, we had to get them developed, and in that process from taking the photo to printing is where the biases existed. Now, photographic film is like anything else. It's manufactured to a certain specification. And in the case of Kodak film from the 50s and 60s, the specification was much smaller than what was possible to expose the light that was hitting the film. And as a result, subjects with darker skin had less details visible in the photos simply because the specifications of the photographic film were not good enough to get the detail. The printing of the photos also had a bias built in because the reference card that were used by the photographic processing locations only had light colored models to compare the photos against the reference card. And as a result, photos with people of darker skin colors were not developed as well as those with lighter colored skin color. This systemic bias carried over into the early days of digital photography. And as a result, many early digital cameras also suffered from the same maladies. Fast forward 20 or so years later, and Google is finally fixing the problem with something called computational photography, using the computer inside the phone to create better exposures of those with darker skin. It's a great advance, and it's well overdue. But it's taking a long time to root out, and that's the challenge we have with healthcare IT systems. The biases get into our medical software through either incorrect logic or through data that has not been properly curated. And let's go through a real world example. There was a major clinical decision support system that had faulty logic and gave more treatment to white patients over black patients and other minorities simply because a developer had a logic error in their code. The software developer's logic was Sicker patients must have more healthcare expenses, and those that aren't as sick or don't need as much healthcare would logically have lesser expense. But it turned out the researchers found a much better way to determine a patient's illness level and therefore whether or not they needed the treatments as recommended by the clinical decision support system. So a better method was determined to use the biomarkers in the patient's clinical data to determine illness level biomarkers like systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and other measurements in the system. This gave a better multi-dimensional clinical view of the patient's health. And as it turned out, using this method, black patients were determined to be sicker on average than white patients and would have received more treatment rather than what was recommended in the CDS system. And this illustrates the health inequities that are perpetuated in healthcare software simply because of faulty logic. The researchers, with their analysis and the openness of the software development company to share how the algorithms work, were able to work together to uncover the issue and correct it for future use by patients and providers. This collaboration, of course, is not common. And that's really the root issue of trying to find algorithm biases in healthcare software. We need that transparency to understand what's going on underneath the covers so we can figure out if there's a problem or not. 
Biases also come from data sampling. Facial recognition software, for example, is notorious for having a bias against non-white-skinned subjects. And it turns out that that the software developers were picking photos to train the systems that looked more like them rather than others. So the bias was against those who aren't software developers, which happen to be mostly white males. Data also comes from physician notes, and there have been studies that show the use of negative words in non-white patients is significantly higher than those for white patients. Also. They found biases against those that use Medicaid and Medicare versus those that use private insurance by a large factor. Also, as it turns out, unmarried patients had more negative comments than married patients. So it's really hard to pinpoint the biases, what they will be, but you can see almost on any topic, there will be a bias potential and we have to be on the lookout for it. Other data biases come from the location where data comes from. One study found from a collection of articles from JAMA that there were just three states, California, Massachusetts, and New York, that presented data for a wide range of studies. This creates an inherent geographical bias against patients in the middle of the country. That could be significant due to food, environmental issues, cultural issues, etc that would impact the recommendations for healthcare to that population. The problem is when we use artificial intelligence and machine learning systems to train on data, when we have biased data, we now have biased systems. So thank you so much for listening. I hope this very high level surface view on algorithm bias is useful and valuable. If you have any questions at all, you can feel free to reach me at my Charter Oak email or my personal business email, artofpatientmatching at gmail.com, or connect with me on LinkedIn. You feel free to ask questions there as well. Thanks so much. See you soon. And don't forget, like the video and subscribe, of course.